Right. So the attacks, they come as a, um, fuck, fucking shit. Where was I? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The attacks, they come, um, few, they come fewer and further in between because, um, <clears throat> because I just have them. Like the attacks themselves, the only way they stop is me, is I either pass out, which has only happened twice, or I come to a conclusion that calms me down. So, um, the attacks are always helpful. They're never, I don't, I never want them. I never want them because I end up just like laying there on the fucking floor, just like screaming at the universe to be nice to me because I'm a good person, I think. You know, like, <laughs> I just, God. But yeah, my, I haven't had an attack since the 18th of December, and that was a really bad one. But I still do feel them creeping up. It's almost like my body wants to have the attacks. It's almost like my body wants to. It's like it's because these last three years with the PTSD and the solipsism and the depersonalization, it, my body's just so used to freaking out over everything that it can freak out over. So I still do believe I have some attacks coming. Like the other day I was laying in bed and I, I started really fucking myself up because I started going all internal. Ooh, what the fuck happened to the focus? I started going all internal and I started thinking that like, I don't know, it's because it's like, what is you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is me? Am I Travis? Am I, like, what is Travis? That's just a word that was, that we've made up to label this body as. Like, where do I reside in? Like, where is the definitive line between you and me? Like, where is it just, is it just like that you're, have a different name and you're from, you were born at a different time and you're born in a different state and country and city and like because a lot all of those are just they're just artificial labels we're giving things that it seems like we're differentiating ourselves so I just started giving I started getting all like internal and think like just trying to figure out where and what I am and I thought that I was gonna like blip myself into like this tiny like just atom of consciousness within my brain or whatever i don't know it's just really fucked up and i don't the fact is i'm not comfortable with knowing what i am i'm not comfortable with my body you can see you can see it just by my demeanor you can see by the way i move and shit i'm just not i'm always so fucking tense i hate it like i just i don't like knowing that i have a heart i'm all i'm so sick of thinking that my heart's always going to give out and i'm so sick of just thinking of like having like a random aneurysm and like i'm a, I'm a hypochondriac to the point that it extends beyond bodily things and it gives me anxiety over the universe because I start think like anything that can make sense and I can sort of connect into a loopy thing that like sort of connects to the acid and mushroom cribs I've had it's it, it's the same way that my brain works with the hypochondria where I think I always assume the worst I mean I hope for the best I want the best but I assume the worst I assume and prepare for the worst which I guess is a good way to live but it results in a lot of Originally unha uh, really originally unhappiness, but now it's just, ugh, God, I just want it to go away. I just want it to go away. I'm so sick of, like, just this lingering, I can feel, like, that fucking demon, like, on my back. Like, it just doesn't want to go away. And there, I just feel the shell of it still on me, even though my brain won't be freaking out about anything. Like I said, I haven't had an attack since the 18th. I can still feel my body wanting it. I, can, I still sweat like crazy and I still get like shaky and I still get like, and all it is, and I just do what everybody tells me. They just say, just don't think about it. Just ignore it and think about something else. And that's what I do. But my body still wants it. And I'm sure that's just the anxiety happening on a subconscious level, but it's where I am. And that's enough talking about anxiety. It's been, I've been talking about anxiety for like six minutes now, but it's a big thing to me. And that's, that's where I am right now. I should have gotten water before. Oh, I got a little bit of water still. Cool. So yeah, a lot of you probably subscribed because of the uh, because of the Busta thing. So, and a lot of you are asking if I do any original content. Yes, yes, I do do a lot of original content. I've put out at least twenty original songs. I don't know if you'd call them songs. They're really just long ass verses. I've never done my own hook. Um, that's the thing. I'm I'm really good at writing rhymes because that's what it comes down to i'm in i'm in love with rhyming things unless you in case you can't already tell um it started with that and that goes back to my childhood it started with my dad and i which he'd give me a word and i would just rhyme it as much as possible so when i found when my brother introduced me to m and m uh it was it was crazy it was crazy because i could tell that it because yes music i had heard music rhyme before but never so deliberately 
I never so deliberately when I heard my name is in like 98 or whatever, 99, it was like, holy shit, this is a person intentionally rhyming things. And I was mad that I wasn't shown it sooner because I was just shown my name is because I thought they thought I would laugh because I'm a kid and it was, and then later I heard like, it wasn't until years later. It feels like years later, but it couldn't have been just a, a year later that I heard the real Slim Shady on the radio. Like it was my my babysitters had picked me up, and like I was supposed to, I, I pretended that I was asleep because nothing else would come on the radio because it was Kerrville, Texas, and nobody fucking lives there. It's the middle of nowhere, and there's um, and it was raining and stuff. It was like a storm, and that was the only thing that could come on the radio. And they said that it, they wouldn't play, and I, but I knew the voice. I knew that was the my name is guy. So I just pretended to be asleep and like. Oh my god, to this day, I'll never forget it. Just like laying there, just like, holy shit. Like, holy shit, this person is rhyming and rhyming and rhyming and rhyming. So that's that's always been my primary passion when with regards to lyricism, is just rhyming as much as possible. And I'd like to believe that I can rhyme with the best of them. At a rhyming level, I'm I'd like to believe I'm at an elite level. Especially if you if you think if you look at my like uh, Elysian 2014 and wait oh my god I cannot wait to you guys hear what I did with Elysian 2015 I can't wait I really can't wait it's it's a beautiful piece like it's more it's finally something more than just that like that like teenage aggression that teenage like because like just naturally everything I write comes out as sort of like a battle type disaster sounding like just like just eat your fucking face off like just type of gun bars like and that it, when I listen to when you listen to any successful MC any successful lyrical MC like who's known for their lyricism that's how they all started out and it, it, I re, it really is a natural thing I don't sit down planning to write like this crazy like these crazy like slaughterish like early Slim Shady-esque type things it's just what comes out when I start rhyming so I, I, I really genuinely believe it's just part of that just teenage angst, you know what I'm saying, still on me. But Elysian 2015 is like my first time trying to step outside of that. I've never even done a cover that's anything more than just like lyrical showmanship. Um, so like the closing rhyme scheme I have on Elysian 2015 is very dear to me. And it's, uh, God, I can't wait for you to hear it. But so, yeah, I'm, I'm just working on that. I'm uh, like... I'm doing that and I do like covers in between and stuff and um, if I have anything left over or stuff that obviously won't work for Elysian 2015 I put it out in a different acapella but like I said at the beginning I'm really just waiting for a producer because I tried the producing thing early on and if you, if you, if you go back to I think mid-2013 mid somewhere in 2013 during that period when I was all fucked up that I don't remember anything <laughs> I, uh, I made a video called like No More or I Quit or something and it, it just because I Long story short, I mean, just watch the video. Long story short, I fucking hate producing. I fucking hate producing music. I love making, I love doing video work, as you can tell by my, like, my WoW videos and stuff. I love video work, but I really just, ugh, I just don't like audio work. I don't like it so much that I just, I won't do it. I just won't do it. Especially when it's my own work and I'm, like, editing, like, a verse or something like that. Because by the time I'm done with it, like, everybody tells me my, um, my, uh, Shady 2.0 remix was, like, some of the greatest shit I've ever done. I hate it. I hate it just because of how much I made myself listen to that fucking thing while I edited it and like just did all the mixer mixing and layers and like the EQ and all that. Like I just, yes, the final product is a lot sharper, but I hate it. It makes me hate it. So I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for somebody who can match my match. What I bring to the table lyrically, um, if they, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody who can match what I bring to the table lyrically sonically. So, you know, all of my acapellas and stuff, all these covers and stuff, there are two things. There are one, I'm auditioning for a producer and I'm, uh, I, I really, this is, I don't know. I've never admitted this, but I really want a strange music fan spotlight. If you watch the front page of the strange music, uh, website, they always, not always, but about, they do it a couple times a year. They do a fan spotlight where they cover, uh, a fan who does like a bunch of covers or who has like a tech tat or whatever, who, or who has like, uh, just does something really strange music involved and, uh, they post them, but all the people that they post who do, who do like covers and stuff, 
Dude, they suck compared to what I do. I, I hate to admit it. I hate to say it because I don't, you know, I, I really try not to hate on other people who are coming up and trying to do their thing. But god damn, they ain't got nothing on me. That Crisis cover I did? Bitch! Oh, nigga! You saw that Crisis cover! You see that shit? Oh my god! Oh, if Tex saw that, oh my god. If Tex saw that Crisis cover. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just like... Like that crisis thing, the so dope. That if you watch my Tech Nine speed run, another one. I'm just like, you'll notice most of these are Tech Nine and Ritz stuff, and all the just all this, uh, all this strange music focused stuff. Because I really want to get a fan spotlight on strange music. That'd be really cool. I would really. That would. That's just one of my dreams. So that's what all the tech covers and stuff are. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's about it. But as usual, I always feel like I have more to talk about. My sister, my sister has been putting, not the sister I grew up with, not my full blood sister, Kelly, um, but my sister, her name is Shavonica, and she is, uh, she's a bit older. Is she my sister? I'm pretty sure she's my sister. Yeah. Uh, she's Brian's daughter. Brian is my dad she's been putting together like our whole bloodline like back to the 1600s it's insane it's insane apparently we're mad scottish and um unfortunately i didn't get the chance to meet them before i moved out of houston because they they like that was right as thanksgiving happened or whatever and they were going to do that and that was the day that was the night that i left so but my sister my blood sister kelly my full blood sister got to meet shavanica and all them and I'd really like to see my brother again because I'm really just a glorified I'm really just a glorified version of my oldest brother Garrett he's like 30 now and he has his own family and I think he has kids and stuff now but it's really cool they all added me on Facebook like last year and it's just really cool because like I, you gotta understand outside of my sister I don't really have any blood family anywhere I don't know them I don't have any interaction with them I don't I don't know I mean I do have my uncle and my my very old grandfather, who I love very much, but they're not blood related at all because my mother was adopted. Um, and of course, I haven't seen or heard from my dad in over half my life. It's so it's I I'm I saw my the last time I saw my older brother it was in 2002. Him and my younger older brother, Blaine, they came and visited in 2002 when I was nine years old, and uh, I was eight eight or nine. And um, that was the last time I ever saw them. But that that left a huge impression on me, especially my older brother Garrett. I'm like I said, I'm just a glorified version of him. I think. I mean, on top of all the other stuff that I think is cool, but I mean, he was just he he was just he was the coolest thing to me at the time. Like he he he's the reason I skateboard. He's the reason that I listen to rap music, and I pro probably the reason I rap myself. He he's he introduced me to so much shit, even though he probably didn't even try to. Because we have, we have so little history together. He just showed me so much cool shit. And I was at that perfect age of, to just suck in impression. And, I, and my dad wasn't around, so it was just my older brother, Garrett. And like he was an awesome... I have it in my mind that Garrett, my brother, is the best skateboarder ever. To this day, like what, what's in my brain is like the best skateboarding my brain has ever seen in my life. And it was just in like our front yard or whatever, like in our front uh, driveway. And he would just, like, I remember just seeing him skate for me when he came to visit that time. And it was just fucking blew my dick off. Like, never again will I ever see somebody skate that good. I mean, of course, there's no way it could have been that good. Because, like, he wasn't, I don't think he was, nah, there's no way. There's no way I'm not better than him now. Unless he's still skating. There's no way that I'm not better now than he was then. But, like I said, in my brain, I still have it that he was the greatest thing to ever touch a skateboard. And, uh, you gotta understand, back then, there was no... There was no, hold up, I gotta, let me start the next video because I have a lot to talk about again. I just got another 